This week, two Caribbean prime ministers made two separate statements that each set off a firestorm of criticism and ridicule. Let's take a look. You will hear that the roads, the roads are bad, the roads are bad, the roads are bad. But my sisters and my brothers, rain has been falling in St. Lucia for the last few months, every day, every other day. How can you fix roads in rain? That was St. Lucia's Prime Minister, Philip Pierre, explaining why potholing and road repair crews have not been out in force to address the nation's pockmarked roller coaster roadways. He was speaking last Saturday with members of the St. Lucian diaspora at a town hall meeting in New York. Once his, marks, once his remarks began circulating back at home, though, they triggered a deluge of indignation. On social media, numerous critics questioned the Pierre administration's planning procedures and ridiculed his assertions, questioning if it had been raining for the entire year. Others pointed out that occasional thunderstorms were no excuse for the poor condition of the roadways, notably the Sir Julian R. Hunt Highway, which has been dubbed the Valley of Potholes. We are now passing for shock also known as the Valley of the Shadow of Potholes. Here do I walk through the Valley of Quasi Machino. I will fear no potholes. For thou art with me, suspension and good tires. All the days of my life, I make it. As the public grew more and more irate over the remarks that even some supporters conceded were poorly worded, commuters during Wednesday rush hour traffic were greeted by surprise road work being done on the island's major artery between the capital city and the heavily populated neighborhoods in the north, triggering a new round of condemnation. As the rains returned the following day, inquiring minds wanted to know what had happened to Pierre's initial assessment. Several other roads on the island remain in a deplorable condition. Meanwhile, recent comments from Trinidad and Tobago's Prime Minister, Dr. Keith Rowley, have left him open to condemnation and ridicule from some of his citizens as well. In response to complaints about clogged roadways, Rowley advised residents of Trinidad to leave home earlier to avoid traffic and save money at the pump in light of the growing congestion. A simple choice like choosing when you travel could save your, fu your, your fuel bill. If you get in that traffic at a particular hour for no good reason, and crawling to Port of Spain from Sandy Grande, you'd burn, you would have burnt up fuel that if you had chosen to go at a different time, you wouldn't have had to burn up. Raleigh was widely chastised for his remarks, with which Trinidadians described as being tone deaf and out of touch. One Twitter commenter wrote, make it make sense what time a person supposed to leave to go to work to avoid traffic. Another added, I'm glad that we can at least agree that employment is a terrible reason for me to be stuck in traffic. Some residents detailed commutes which began as early as 5 a.m. in certain places in order to get to work for 8 o'clock, which is still significant, with a still significant time spent idling in traffic. Rowley's comments about the feasibility of making wider use of a work from home model also ruffled feathers. I don't know that we are sufficiently prepared for that to be a major initiative, largely because it requires certain technical infrastructure and a certain level of discipline. This is Trinidad eh? and Tobago. So we're not ready for a major work from home policy because some people are even working in the office. Some citizens felt offended, condescended to and infantilized, especially as much of the country spent a large proportion of the pandemic doing exactly what the prime minister said Trinidadians were not sophisticated enough to do. A lesson to leaders that sometimes how one says something can be just as important as the content of the discussion.